price of the stock divided by the earnings per share. And I'm actually going to calculate the earnings per share for last call. By the way, this is a historical number, so probably should be used. This is a balance sheet. I don't want a balance sheet. What I want is the income statement. Income statement is also known as the statement of profit and loss. Okay, so we're using price per earnings ratio. What's the price? Can you see? What's the earnings per share? So I tell you what that value is. Looks like I need to look I'm going to look to see if this is actually correct because I know that this is an old sheet but this is interesting to me because if the last book is trading at a B of 4 in this environment, then forget what the value, what the book value of the company is. Because the average PE of the market is 20. Year one, company makes up. 133. Year two, we're assuming nothing changes. Assuming the price doesn't change because you already bought it. So it doesn't really matter what the price is, no. But let's assume that the earnings remain the same. Which they typically do. Last one kind of grows at about 4% per year. All things consider. Alright? There are other companies like Busico that will do 30% per year. And as a case study, I actually wanted to go through, but we'll look at that. So $1.33. $1.33 plus $1.33. Year 2, you're at $2.66. See where we're going here. By the alright, so let's add that to 133. So you're at three. Where are we here? Five. Five plus three two. The company has given you back all the money. Anything beyond this is just profits. Okay? So that's the growth on your investment. And that's what people really should look at when they're buying the stock. You know, sir, I talk a lot more about the company than the stock. Because if the company performs, the stock will typically follow through. And the, the stock tends to perform far better when there is good news about the company, even more so that it pushes a company A company that performs is easily pushed from being fairly valued to overvalued. We're currently seeing that, well, we see the lower reach there yet. We saw that with Barito. Who remembers the Barito um, rice issue? And how much media publicity there was around Barito. Remember we saw it went up by 600%? The company cannot grow by 600% in one year. So that stock is clearly overvalued. The stock is up 600%, but the company, its operations, its earnings per share, cannot grow by 600% in one year, under no circumstances. All right?
Data, well, there, there are two different philosophies. So there was one thing I didn't say over there. That's a very um, important factor. And you, the PE, it is six. The PE is a relative valuation method versus the book value, which is a fundamental valuation method. Because remember, when we're looking at book value, we're looking at what the company has. In that case, we're making so many assumptions, and we're also comparing it to what the market is doing. So if every, if every stock is selling for 20 times earnings, which is really what this means. So this score is actually four times earnings. Understood? So imagine a situation where every stock is selling for 20 times earnings and you just pop in on a stock that is selling for four times earnings. You found something that is undervalued compared to the rest of the market. Doesn't necessarily mean that the company is undervalued. We've already proved that it isn't. But compared to the market, the stock is undervalued. Right, and that makes sense to me. I, as I said, this is an old sheet, so that's why. I, but I use today's price. So, and that allows me to make a segue into probably the last and most important point. When calculating the PE, you have to, you have to keep in consideration that it is just a one-time thing and it is a snapshot. The earnings of the company are not constant. All right? And anything, let's say competition comes into the space, let's say there is a hurricane, let's say the company issues more stock. All of those things affect the PE immediately. The price moving up changes the PE. So you have to use all that. So the PE is just a relative valuation method that allows us to quickly assess where is this company in comparison to the entire market. But it is, I wouldn't use it as a singular method for determining whether our stock is undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. Comment. What is the PE of we see for right? 25. So what, what is that saying? That's saying that based on Wisinko's current earnings, it will take 25 years for Wisinko to return all of your money. Are you willing to wait 25 years? So, some can. There's a lot of things I should mention. There are so many things that I should mention, right? But there, it's just that many things to consider. Okay? Um, company, a low PE can be justified, so too can a high PE. What do I mean by that? Let's say a company has a PE at one point of, let's say, five. I think I'll go higher, a PE of 50. Let's say it's a company that has an application that is being used by millions of people and is now trending in both the App Store and the Play Store. Let's say that company makes money through advertising. Are you following me? So, we have an application, it's trendy. We have it in the Play Store and in the App Store, so you are addressing two markets. And the application earns money from advertising. Can you see then that I would be willing to pay more for a company like that than say a company that has to go and build a center, um, hire staff, etc., in order to grow earnings? If that app goes viral, it means my ad revenue, because I get paid per user per click, it means my ad revenue just went up exponentially. This is how companies like Facebook, like um, Snapchat, and thank you very much for that, but you're actually correct, are able to have 
high valuations because the potential for the company to earn so much in so little time is so, um, the potential is high. The probability is also high. Does that make sense? Sure? Alright, so I'm ending on a low. <laughs> but that's fine. Alright, so I'm going to stop here. So we basically went through two, two valuation methods. So, how do we really know if the stock is undervalued or overvalued? The answer is you have to look at a number of things. And then you're going to look at where the price is in comparison. This is known as quantitative analysis. There's also qualitative analysis, which is looking at the potential reach. So that the one I did just know, the qualitative analysis. Alright? And in so doing, you're able to say, okay, it will, it will reach a million people next year, though it only has 50,000 this year profits are going to be far higher. So I'm willing to pay more per share right now for this stock. All right, any questions? There must be many. So basically, you should be Sorry, go ahead. So basically, you should be able to purchase shares in companies that have the ratios less than 20. Not necessarily. Why? Because Facebook, for instance, might have a PE of 50. Fontana right now has a PE of what, 40 plus? Uh, I'm still telling you. Probably that high. But here's why. They just opened the new store. That's going to make the earnings higher. Remember, if earnings is now higher, what's going to happen to the PE? It's going to come down. So they're based on the activities of the company, you can justify Fontana's higher PE. 